Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. Let us continue reading Riyadh Salahin, Volume 1. It's been highly educational for us. We've learned quite a lot about our deen, about our religion. And reading them in this methodological order allows us to memorize it. All right, let's begin. Number 558 in the section titled Excellence of Generosity. Let's begin. Bismillah. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her reported, the, mess <clears throat> the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, had slaughtered a sheep and distributed major portions of its meat. Then he, peace be upon him, asked, Is there anything left? She replied, Nothing, except the shoulder. Thereupon, he said, All of it is left except its shoulder. Oh, a termini. Hold on, let's see what the commentary says about this. This hadith reveals a truth to man that he should not eat up anything and everything all alone. Rather, in this regard, he is supposed to take the maximum care for the distribution of alms and charity, so that it may stand him in good stead in the hereafter. What one has given in charity will by no means be wasted, for he will doubtlessly find its reward with Allah on the day of resurrection. So whatever is given in charity is never wasted, and we will find our reward with Allah on the day of resurrection. Beautiful. Lots of hope. Asma bint Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with her reported. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to me, Do not hoard, otherwise Allah will withhold from you, Abu Hari and Muslim. So hoarding. It's good to have some say for the winter as we call it but you definitely want to share your bounty right somebody once made a comparison of people who live in tropical climates where abundance is different than when the winter comes for certain people where you need to be canning pickling preserving salting meat and stocking up on items because winter is going to really limit what you can eat right but that doesn't mean you don't share it just means that you're not giving everything away having nothing for yourself in cases of emergency and then hiding yourself in trouble preparedness versus hoarding right now my great grandma and a lot of people in my family had problems with hoarding my great grandma she has an entire house hoarded up with junk, but lives with my grandma on her couch. And she's hoarded in the living room as well. It always puzzled me how someone could have an entire house that has, it's literally like in disarray, it's hoarded. When there's so many people in a housing crisis, so many people who could use it, but it's her property, right? She's like 90 something. And she is, is, poor, is poor, but she still has a house that's paid for, I think. But she don't use it. And has, she has, you know, 10 children and probably at least 60-something grandchildren. And then a bunch of great-grandchildren. And great-great-grandchildren, she's really old, that, she, that could use that property. But instead, she has hoarded junk in it. And... It's like raw and expired stuff. I've told you this story before, if you guys recall. But my grandma had a dear friend named Linda who died. She was a hoarder. And we used to go over to her house a lot. And in her kitchen, it was just very filthy. You know, things hoarded everywhere. Everything's hoarded in the bathroom. She was a kind soul, but she had a problem with hoarding. Now that's a different type of hoarding than hogging we call it hogging all your wealth 
hoarding all your wealth, but hoarding in and of itself has many expressions. So it's very important for us to recall that. Being a, collect a collector of vintage items and selling it or having a storage of prepared items for you in case of an apocalypse, you know, that's quite different. But there are people who can't stop shopping and then they just hoard and hoard and hoard. But she wasn't stingy, but she had a problem with hoarding, compulsive hoarding. It, and they have a very difficult time letting those things go. She didn't have a husband, and she had no children. She took care of her uh, blind mom who had like a hospital style bed in her living room. So she had a very kind of a sad, lonely life, but she still was good hearted, but had a problem with hoarding. So I'm very familiar with uh, people who have that mental capacity to hoard and I, it's really strange. People have to fight against it. So when we see Hadith here about hoarding, it's very important for us to remember there's a lot of people whose brains incline toward that. The dragon on the pile of gold. Abu Huraira, may Allah be peace with him, reported, I heard the messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying the case of a miserly man and a generous man who gives in charity is similar to that of two persons who are clad in armor from their breast up to their collarbones when the generous man gives in charity his armor expands so much as to cover his fingertips and toes when the miser intends to spend something, the armor contracts, and every ring of it sticks to the place where it is, sinks into his flesh. He tries to loosen it, but it does not expand. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Oh, it's a very unique example. I want to read the commentary on this one, give us a deeper understanding. The Hadith metaphorically highlights the significance of giving in charity, saying it covers up a man's sins. So, giving in charity helps to cover up your sins in such a way as a full coat of mail reaching his feet conceals his whole body. Aside from it, there is a good news for the almsgiver that his wealth will receive divine blessings and he will be safe from trials and tribulations. Whereas a miser faces a warning that his sins and defects will be made known to people and not concealed from them, and he will remain the target of miseries. We are further told that when a generous man intends to give charity, his chest expands for it and he happily gives vent to his generosity. On the other hand, when a ch cheaper man intends to spend money in charity, his chest contracts and he withholds his giving hand. To conclude, this hadith brings good news to generous people and a warning to misers. So again, getting more protection with the more generous you are. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, He who gives in charity the value of a date which he legally earned, and Allah accepts only that which is pure. Allah accepts it with his right hand and fosters it for him, as one of you fosters his mare until it becomes like a mountain. So Allah only accepts that which is pure. Make sure you're earning halal money. This is a big problem with a lot of red pill influencers who are Muslims. Doing a lot of trashy bad things. Trying to get clicks and ad revenue. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, While a man was walking through a barren land, he heard a voice coming out of a cloud saying, 
irrigate the garden of so-and-so. Thereupon the cloud drifted in a certain direction and discharged its water over a rocky plain. The streamlets followed into a channel. This man followed the channel until it reached a garden, and he saw the owner of the garden standing in its center, working with its spade spreading, the water changing the course of the water. He asked him, O slave of Allah, what is your name? He told his name, which was the same that he heard from the cloud. The owner of the garden then asked him, O slave of Allah, why did you ask my name? He replied, I heard a voice from a cloud which poured down this water, saying, Irrigate the garden of so-and-so. I would like to know what do you do with it, he said. Now that you ask me, I will tell you. I estimate the produce of the garden and distribute one-third of it in charity. I spend one-third on myself and my family and invest one-third back into the garden. Muslim. Okay. One third, so you see this splitting up charity, your family, reinvesting. These hadiths have really highlighted how not only will be forgiven, but how you can make it less painful to give and to make sure that you make it part of your Islamic mindset. Okay, chapter 61 The Prohibition of Miserliness. Allah, the exalted, says, But he who is greedy miser and thinks himself self-sufficient and belies al-husna, it will make smooth for him the path for evil. And what will his wealth avail him when he goes down in destruction? 92.8.11 And what will his wealth avail him when he goes down in destruction? And whosoever is saved from his own covetousness then they are the successful ones. 64, 16. Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Beware of oppression, for oppression will be darkness on the day of resurrection. And beware of stinginess, because it destroyed those who were before you. It incited them to shed their blood and deem unlawful as lawful. Muslim. Look at that. So, oppression and stinginess. I really like to think about how many people could do good in their own public schools. Just doing little fun things for the kids goes a long way to create some hope for them. For the younger ones, you know. A lot could be done for them by those who have it. Chapter 62 Selflessness and Sympathy Allah the Exalted says, And give them immigrants preference over themselves, even though they were in need of that. 59 9. And they give food in spite of their love for it, or for the love of Him to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. Abu Huraira, may Allah be peace with him, reported, A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, I am hard pressed by hunger. He, peace be upon him, sent a word to one of his wives, who replied, By him who has sent you with the truth, I have nothing except water. Then he sent the same message to another wife, and received the same reply. He sent the message to all of them, i.e. his wives, and received the same reply. Then he, peace be upon him, said, Who will entertain this man as a guest? One of the Ansar said, O Messenger of Allah, I will. So he took him home and said to his wife, Serve the guest of the Messenger of Allah. Another narration is, The Ansari asked his wife, Have you got anything? She answered, Nothing except a little food for the children. He said, Keep them busy with something. And when they ask for food, put them to sleep. When the guest enters, extinguish the light and give him the impression that they were also eating, so that they sat down and the guest ate, and they passed the night hungry. When he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the morning, he said to him, 
Allah admired what you did with your guests last night, Abu Hari and Muslim. So, except a little food for, he said, keep them busy with something. And they asked for food, put them to bed. Uh, so they sat down and the guest ate. And the, so the children went without so the guest could have something because he was hard pressed for food. And they're asleep, so the. It's a little easier for them to cope with that hunger pain. Once you get into a deep sleep. Sometimes you can also, if you're hungry, you can also just drink a big thing of water and go to sleep. Or some milk. Just to have something to make that pain go away. But they wanted to feed somebody who was desperately pressed. They had sympathy for them. And that was also an act of selflessness. Wow. So even here you see an example of somebody who found a way to give even when they didn't have it. So we can, what we can do is we can find things to give in our own way. For me, I think of my time doing these videos and studying, trying to inspire other people to study, sharing recipes, um, sharing nature videos, like trying to share beauty memes, some thought-provoking news. That's like, to me, sharing a bit of my perspective on trying to fight against the machine that pushes degeneracy and, and thug culture and hookup culture and all the nonsense we see to kind of counteract that. So it's like I put my time, and time is very valuable because it can be used in many ways. And I share my journey, and that is a very interesting thing to do because many people kind of flaunt that they've already achieved the end and not the struggle to it. And so, sharing something, being selfless, and having sympathy, and trying to not oppress others and not be stingy. There's a lot of expressions of it when you really sit down and analyze it. Very insightful. So as Muslims, we are prohibited from being misers. We are encouraged to give zakah and sadaqah and to s utilize the surplus of our wealth effectively. That's what I've learned so far from this section. So it's the benefit of reading the hadith because you learn a lot about how a Muslim is supposed to behave and act and that's very rewarding. I hope you learned something, I know I, I did and if you'd like to join my blog it's www.subscribestar.com slash Mahon Archive. Hope to see you there.